okay okay good evening everybody and welcome to the cohort 2 of the blockchain foundation program today's week 1 instructor interaction so myself nikhil v chandran uh, r and d en engineer at kerala blockchain academy so blockchain foundation program as you already know is a free four week or one month long course that is uh, designed to enable you to uh, understand the fundamentals of the blockchain technology. This course consists of uh, four weeks of uh, content that is available uh, online for you to study at your own pace. And each at the end of each week, there will be one quiz each uh, and you will have to complete that quiz with minimum 60% mark. Uh, and you, you will have two attempts to finish the quiz. So each week you will have a quiz. So week one, if you complete the quiz with minimum 60% mark, you will be able to, uh, you will uh, get to week, uh, week two quiz and week two quiz also you will have to finish with 60% mark. And finally, uh, after, uh, after finishing all the quizzes, you will be getting a digital certificate from K Kerala Blockchain Academy at the end of the course, after the course finishes. So, uh, the uh, main advantage of this course is, the main agenda of this course is to not to become a blockchain developer, but to let you understand the fundamental concepts regarding blockchain technology, the very basic concepts. After this course, you can, uh, if you finish this course successfully, then you can join uh, the certified blockchain associate program offered the Kerala Blockchain Academy at 50% discount. Uh, and this is not a virtual classroom session actually. This session is intended to clear your uh, discussion board doubts. So uh, you can post all your uh, queries on the discussion board and um, you, that is the only means of communication uh, to, to the instructor. So every week we, we will be discussing all your doubts regarding uh, the course in and you can post all your queries in the discussion board. So uh, we will be discussing all the queries that you uh, post in the discussion board and uh, today we will have some basic uh, discussion regarding the fundamentals of blockchain since this is the first week let us uh, delve a little uh, deep into the basics of blockchain. So just uh, a basic introduction is session is planned for today and some queries that you uh, that are posted will be discussed okay so this is a maximum one hour session so uh, it can be less than one hour also so that is a maximum time that is allotted for this instructor interaction so that's all about the uh, administrative part now going on to moving on to the session part uh, the first question that anyone will have regarding the term blockchain is what is a blockchain so is it a network or is it some kind of a, 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 a cryptocurrency or is is it something else will be the doubt that some of you may be having so a blockchain is decentralized so what is a decentralized network for that we can take an example of a classroom so you can see in this image on this on the image to the left you can see a teacher is teaching uh, the the students and uh, you can see that the students are all uh, listening to the lecture from the teacher similar to what is happening right now uh, i am teaching or i am lecturing and you are all listening similarly there is one central entity or the teacher who is teaching and all the other students they are all listening to the lecture so that is as a kind of a centralized system which is which in contrast to the right image where you can see that the students they are all uh, free to do whatever they want there is no teacher who is controlling the students so they are free to do whatever activity that they like or they are free to do whatever they want so each student has a privilege to act at their own interest so this is similar to a decentralized network so 
uh, it is very similar but in a decentralized network there will be some rules that these students will have to follow so we will get to that in the next sessions so this is the fundamental difference between a centralized system and a decentralized system in a centralized system there is a central authority or entity who is controlling the entire network or entire system and in a decentralized system uh, there is no such entity who is controlling each uh, student they are enforcing the rule by themselves or they are each student is free to act in their own interest and they will be acting uh, for a common goal or they will be acting in synchronization for achieving a common goal of learning so that is the idea behind decentralization so coming back to our image in centralized computing as you can see in the left image uh, each uh, client systems they are connected to the uh, central system or a central database or a central server and the information is passed down from the central server to each client system so there's there's a central point of failure here if this central server fails then the centralized computing will fail in contrast a decentralized computing each client has its own copy of this uh, entire database or each copy each uh, node or each uh, computer in this network each has equal privileges and they have all the data that is necessary so even if one of the computer in this network fails there is still uh, the, the copy of that data available at other locations within the network and each other nodes already have that data copy so this is the idea of decentralized computing where there is a little bit of data redundancy and also a decentralization aspects okay i hope you understood the concept regarding uh, decentralized computing and decentralized computing with the help of this classroom example now uh, just uh, moving on to the the currency aspect of bitcoin so or the blockchain the first blockchain network known as bitcoin uh, before going on to that aspect let us discuss about some fundamental or the evolution of currency so initially as you already know there was a barter system where one type of commodity is traded for another type of commodity then came the cowrie shells uh, which was a special kind of coin where they are where the rarer the shell the more valuable they are then came the metals so the metals uh, traders they found it uh, difficult to carry so metals were a kind of commodity to trade and metals were formed into shapes to resemble these kinds of shells then one metal known as gold it was uh, very easy and it was very precious and very hard to counterfeit and that gold became the standard currency for uh, a long time in our recent past and soon later came the banks and the banks they started introduce the paper currency and they put put away the gold and other uh, such currencies in their private vaults so banks they started issuing this paper currency and paper currency became the standard so these paper currencies are known as a fiat currencies or uh, the currencies that are accepted by the government like the indian rupee or the us dollar they are known as fiat currencies but in the recent past uh, in 2008 as you may already be aware there was a financial crisis that arose because banks uh, were collapsing and due to uh, a series of bad decisions taken by the centralized banks so that was the reason for the 2008 financial crisis and the recession that followed so while this happened what happened was that out of this chaos that was resulting from this financial crisis in 2008 a document was published online called bitcoin a uh, peer to peer electronic cash system by an unknown entity or by a group of anonymous entities known as satoshi nakamoto so still today till date we don't know who satoshi is the identity is still not revealed but uh, he initially he published this document and it, it was put out publicly and in a cryptocurrency forum 
or in a crypt not in a cryptocurrency in a crypto forum and uh, later in 2009 after uh, around one year of development satoshi launched bitcoin as an alternative to the current financial system and other centers of power so when satoshi launched this uh, system in 2009 it was not that much popular but gradually uh, as the years passed by uh, in 2010 the first uh, transaction was done that was for buying two pizzas worth rupees 10000 and the fun fact is that uh, at that time uh, for 10000 btc uh, this was uh, the current rate is around a huge amount which you can calculate by calculating the current bitcoin price right so uh, that was one of the interesting uh, pizza uh, buying that happened in 2010 by this guy then uh, current uh, in the recent uh, uh, past there in 2019 uh, we find that bitcoin has been adopted or it, it has become a, such a uh, fad or it has become a craze among the population that currently it is consuming uh, more electricity or energy consumption than many countries so the total energy consumption of bitcoin due to uh, the mining aspect of bitcoin is much higher than uh, the energy consumption of uh, some small countries like czech republic or uh, argentina or something okay so that are some of the interesting aspects that resulted from the financial crisis then came the bitcoin which uh, laid out the foundations for the new uh, alternative uh, financial system alternative because bitcoin was uh, the first blockchain that was introduced and it was it the underlying mechanism that was uh, used in bitcoin was then subsequently used in many different other uh, blockchain networks such as ethereum or neo eos binance etc so then came about this uh, flood of other uh, currencies and other platforms that are you that was utilizing the concepts that was uh, revolutionized by bitcoin so the underlying ledger part of that uh, bitcoin was used in all the other block all the other blockchain networks that came later so the fundamental concept of bitcoin the decentralization aspect, uh, the led, the common led, ledger aspect and all the uh, advantages of Bitcoin was used uh, in all the other networks. So let us discuss about uh, the Bitcoin blockchain a little bit. So as I mentioned before, all the uh, uh, queries that you have please post in the discussion board uh, there is a uh, there is a place in the edx online edx course where you can uh, post your queries so you can post all your queries in the discussion board and we will be discussing them in the next week sessions so today this is not intended once again i am repeating this is not intended to be a classroom session this is just a basic introduction since this is the first week this is just a basic introduction to this uh, blockchain technology, not a virtual classroom session. So I won't be uh, going too much into detail. Now, uh, what is known as uh, the Bitcoin with the capital B, it is the protocol for a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network that creates this consensus without needing a central authority to provide trust. That means the protocol or the network is known as the Bitcoin with the capital B. And with the other Bitcoin with the small uh, case B is known as the currency or the token that is issued as a reward in the proof of work mining process. So the currency Bitcoin is there and the network Bitcoin is there. Then comes the blockchain, which is what we are focusing on in this program, in this blockchain foundation program. The public ledger where the network records the transactions and these transactions or the records they are written in this public ledger. So this is known as the blockchain. So let us uh, discuss more about the blockchain part. Before that, what is the difference between a fiat currency and a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? 
so in the left you can see the fiat currency like the dollar and on the right you can see the uh, cryptocurrency like bitcoin so in a fiat currency like dollar the transactions may or may not be recorded because uh, if you go to a shop uh, you may uh, be giving a uh, paper currency so that transaction may not be recorded anywhere but in bitcoin all the transactions are recorded uh, digitally and all and every node in the network ca carries the copy of that entire uh, ledger or entire ledger copies maintained by every node in the network so that is the first difference the second difference is that the fiat currency it is backed by a central authority like uh, uh, the central banks and in case of bitcoin there is no such central authority that is controlling the uh, bitcoin price or it is not controlling the there is no such central authority controlling it so uh, who is controlling the bitcoin uh, you might ask it is being self controlled by program by uh, computer programs or code is controlling it so that is the second difference the third difference is that uh, the fiat currency like the dollar is a legal tender rupee and dollar they are all legal tender you can uh, buy things using those but in uh, many countries like in india bitcoin is not yet a legal tender the last difference or the last major difference is that uh, the fiat currencies like the dollar uh, or the rupee they don't have a supply cap so you, there can be more and more um, uh, creation of uh, such kind of uh, fiat currencies so the government can print more and more currency but bitcoin it has the supply cap uh, so 21 million is the supply cap of Bitcoin, but there are cryptocurrencies that don't have a supply cap like Ethereum uh, Currently Ethereum doesn't have a supply cap So Bitcoin has the supply cap like 21 million is a supply cap. It is enforced uh, by code uh, while tra uh, Traditional or fiat currencies. They don't have a supply cap. So government can print more and more money So this is the reason why people call Bitcoin as digital gold not all crypto just bitcoin as digital gold because it has a limited supply while dollar or other fiat currencies they don't have a supply cap right so i hope you understood the difference between fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies so here here we are focusing on bitcoin so the difference between dollar and bitcoin right so going on uh, moving on to the some uh, technical aspects of blockchain so why the name blockchain so unlike storing in a single database the blockchain is distributed or decentralized across many parties over the internet uh, so that means there is no single point of failure all the data in a public blockchain it is distributed and uh, decentralized and all the nodes that are having all the copy of all the all the transactions or all the data uh, that they are held by all the nodes in the network and they have equal privilege in a public blockchain so in that sense this can act like a immutable global book for trusted transactions that means there is uh, a block so a block contains transactions so the fundamental unit of any uh, blockchain network is transactions so the transaction uh, will come and they many transactions will be grouped together to form a block then this block will be added to the ledger by some mechanism that known as consensus mechanisms so these uh, here you can see these blocks are chained uh, together so the first block is uh, connected to the second block by a link and the second block is connected to the third block by a link and so on so the last block is connected to the second last block by a link so there are blocks of transactions and cryptographic link so these linkages are by cryptographic techniques so that is why this is known as a block chain so block of transactions and cryptographic linkages that is forming the chain so that is why we we uh, the name came about as blockchain technology because there are a block of transactions and cryptographic linkages of chains so you can go uh, and read about this more in in the course and you will understand how uh, this linkages are happening by means of cryptographic techniques such as hashing
now going on to defining the chain so uh, what um, what is a blockchain a blockchain is a technology that is decentralized means all the nodes are not geographically confined to a single location they are distributed across the network it is immutable uh, means even if uh, some of the uh, net some of uh, the nodes fail or even if uh, the data once it is stored it cannot be uh, deleted because uh, even if one thing all the uh, even if there are some failure of some nodes that won't affect the immutability property of this ledger because the all the nodes carry the entire copy of the uh, ledger so that is why this is known as immutable because it cannot be modified or changed it is a real time open ledger for recording or any type of transactions or data so that is the why aspect of the chain uh, there is no single owner for this uh, ledger because each node has equal privileges there is no single owner for this uh, blockchain network so that is why it, it is uh, a real time open ledger which is uh, decentralized and immutable so when did this network came about we discussed already it came about in a white paper in 2008 by uh, an anonymous entity known as satoshi nakamoto so this is how the blockchain is defined it is a decentralized distributed immutable te ledger technology which is storing uh, op the ledger the, there's a ledger for storing or recording all the transaction data and there is no single owner and the first blockchain that came about was the bitcoin blockchain so let us break down this uh, blockchain into its fundamental concepts with an example fr from a book uh, like we can consider uh, the blocks to books so there are pages of a book right so the pages of the book for uh, they they form a book and these books there can be multiple copies made of these books and each person there are different persons who carry the copy of this book so this is the example that we are considering there are pages the pages are joined together to form the book and there are multiple copies of this book and this uh, book uh, these copies are held by different people at different locations so everyone ke keeps the copy of the same book so how is it related to blockchain each page of this uh, book can be considered as a transaction individual transactions that occur in the blockchain network so these individual transactions are then taken together and come collected together to form a block so the book is similar to a block of transactions and these block of transactions are added to the library of these persons so each book uh, represents a block of transactions and that block of transactions are distributed across the different persons so the different persons can be uh, uh, attributed to people or the nodes in the network the nodes in the network are represented by these different people different uh, persons so this these books will be cryptographically uh, chained or hashed together so there will not be just one uh, book there will be a, a chain of books that are held by this entire uh, ledger of transactions or tra uh, the entire block chain of blocks will be held by each node or each person in the network so that is the definition or how we break down the blockchain how the transactions from the block and the blocks are stored in the nodes so the, the persons are uh, attributed to the nodes the books are the blocks and the pages are the transactions so you can read more uh, more uh, regarding this topic in the course now coming to the final working of the blockchain part uh, how does a blockchain work under the hood how does a transaction uh, happen in a blockchain let us discuss in a high level so some person like let this be bob and the this be uh, and or someone like alice let this be bob and this be alice so bob initiates a transaction and that transaction is uh, uh, maybe sent through some mechanism like a wallet application so that transaction will be sent from bob's wallet that cryptocurrency 
will be transacted to this recipient address from Bob's address through a wallet application. So that transaction will go through a uh, network and this transaction is then sent across this uh, blockchain network. Then what will happen? One of the nodes will uh, get this copy of this transaction and it will broadcast the copy of that transaction to all the other nodes in the network. So all the networks, uh, they uh, get the transaction. So the, in the next step, the nodes will then verify the transaction, whether uh, the, the sender is correct, uh, the, the rightful owner of that crypto is sending the, uh, sending the amount and the recipient address is valid and so on. In the next step, nodes will add the transaction to a block. So not just this transaction, many transactions uh, from others will also be added to this block. So this Bob to Alice transaction will also be added to a block. Then the, in the next step, each node will create a block using uh, these transactions that are received in the nodes. So each no node will create a block and one block is selected from these nodes and this selection process is known as a consensus mechanism that we will discuss in the next week next week session the selected block is then sent across the network so that is broadcasted by one uh, node known as a leader node or the selected node that selected block will be sent across the network so the network will get that new block of transactions and finally, the nodes will verify the block, whether the uh, block selected is valid or not, and so on. And the nodes will add this block to the existing ledger of blockchain, will chain it to the existing uh, blocks. And finally, the transaction will be complete. So this is the high level working of a, uh, how a transaction uh, life cycle or how a transaction occurs in a blockchain network. So this exact figure is available in the uh, course so you can read more about this in the course and finally coming to the application part of blockchain uh, let us discuss about one famous application by ibm and I, one issue that IB, walmart had was that walmart as you know is a supermarket so uh, Walmart wanted to trace the origin of goods like uh, from where does the mangoes come or from where does the pork come uh, in the supermarket at the uh, retail outlet or at the shop and they, they wanted to trace the origin from which farmer or which farm this mangoes came from. So that was very difficult in the traditional uh, way it required around a week time like six and a half days was required to track the source of this produce. So then IBM uh, along with uh, a technology known as Hyperledger, they, dis they formed this uh, uh, fabric uh, kind of system where it, it was using a permissioned kind of blockchain and using that blockchain, they were able to reduce the time to track the source of the mango uh, to which farm it came from in the supply chain to around 2.2 seconds. So, so the easiest way was to just uh, scan the QR code in the end, pro end mango. So there can there can be a QR code in the mango packet. So the, the, there can be a device or a mobile can simply scan the QR code and all the details uh, will be displayed in that application. So a simple application uh, can be developed for this purpose. So this is how IBM solved this issue of tracing the uh, supply, uh, the source of uh, mangoes and uh, such uh, origin of goods uh, or provenance of every goods in the supply uh, in the supply chain of Walmart. So this was a blockchain that was specific to Walmart. It was a permission blockchain. So it was a similar to the fabric that is being used in Hyperledger. So uh, this is one example, you can read more about it in the course. So how is it impactful? If, if one uh, lot of, uh, if one lot from one specific farm is not uh, good quality, then this can be selectively quarantined and it can reduce the transaction cost. Like you can, we can uh, trace whether 
uh, the time has been up or something like that and they can just reduce the uh, or they can just uh, selectively discard off the bad quality products and so on. So this is one interesting application of blockchain in supply chain for tra tra tracking the origin of goods. Now we are coming to the discussion board queries. So I saw some discussion board queries but those were off for the subsequent week sessions. Uh, so let us discuss some questions from the previous uh, batch. So one question was like centralized servers can store huge amounts of data. Can each blockchain node have the same capacity as a server? So as we discussed in the first slide, uh, there are centralized servers then they can store huge amount of data. But if that cent centralized servers are replaced by a blockchain node, can that blockchain node have the same capacity as a server is the question. So there can be, uh, the answer is that there can be machines which are a normal laptops that can form a uh, node in the network. So they need not be uh, storing such huge amount of data. So the capacity of a node, it depends on which blockchain uh, it is being deployed on like in Bitcoin. For being a full node, you don't need to have such a huge capacity. Even a Raspberry Pi can be used for becoming a node. But for, uh, for the purpose of mining or gaining the block reward, you need to have huge uh, um, capacity or huge computationally powerful computers. And the question of huge amount of data, it doesn't arise in... Uh, blockchain because blockchain is not big data. Blockchain is not supposed to store huge amount of data. Blockchain is supposed to uh, decentralized or it is supposed to uh, revolutionize the current existing applications by making it not dependent on centralized servers. So the idea or the uh, main uh, advantage of blockchain is not for data storage but for decentralization and immutability aspects. Uh, and the next question is also similar. If each node in, is distributed and can be non-server machines, how can such a system replace the current servers? Uh, the answer is that uh, similar similar to the, what I mentioned earlier, if, if the, non uh, the current servers are not supposed to be, all the existing systems are not supposed to be replaced by blockchain systems. If the current server systems, they are working properly, there is no need to uh, replace the current existing servers but there are use cases where blockchain can be of uh, very advantage like uh, supply chain or banking or there are many other use cases that are specific where blockchain can co uh, give you some advantage over the traditional client server architectures. So you can you, there is no need to replace all the current servers uh, but uh, there are applications where uh, we can we can have advantages by using a decentralized blockchain solution. Another question is that what is the eligibility condition for a node to enter the decentralized network? The eligibility condition uh, in a public blockchain, there is no eligibility condition. They just need to um, download the entire copy of the blockchain and they can become part of the decentralized network. Uh, and uh, in, in permission blockchain, you might need the privilege. Uh, sometimes uh, you need a network administrator to allow uh, you to enter into that network. So there will be a network administrator in permission blockchain. In public blockchains, there is no uh, network administrator. Anyone can form part of that, uh, be a part of that public blockchain system. Next question is, what are the security threats for decentralized networks? So. Uh, in decentralized networks, in public blockchains like Bitcoin, there is something known as uh, the consensus mechanisms and that will deal with uh, the decision making uh, aspects that will deal with the security, most of the security uh, problems that are facing these decentralized networks will be taken, of, taken care by the consensus mechanisms and the decentralization itself will act like a cushion for uh, security aspects. Because all, even if some of the nodes are corrupted, uh, all the other uh, nodes can verify whether uh, 
uh, that corrupted value is not propagated throughout the network because they will be having the entire copy of the ledger. So there is a mechanism known as consensus mechanisms that are used to deal with these kinds of security threats in decentralized networks like public blockchains. But in permission blockchains, it is similar to a tradi uh, traditional database kind of system. Uh, there will be a there can be a VPN or a virtual private network or a network administrator. There can be firewalls. Uh, so in those kinds of network, they are not decentralized. They are distributed ledger technologies, and they there are similar there are security threats which are similar to traditional databases in such kind of systems. But in public blockchains like Ethereum or Bitcoin, there are no such security threats as such uh, because the system itself is uh, designed in such a way to handle uh, um, these kinds of uh, attacks or any kind of attacks. So we can discuss more regarding all these aspects in the next class. So this was the introduction class. Uh, once again, let me repeat, this is a four week uh, course as you already know and this is week one instructor interaction. Uh, there will be four quizzes. You will have one month to finish the quiz and there will be strict uh, one month deadlines. They are mentioned in the uh, course. The deadline set will not be changed. So after the end of one month, there will, you will not be having an access to this course content. So please finish the quizzes well before uh, the deadline. And you will have two attempts to attempt all the quizzes. And uh, but after attempting, uh, you you need to get minimum 60% mark and after while attempting first quiz you will get 60% mark then you can attempt second quiz then and so on so you, after finishing four quizzes you will get the certificate at, at the end of the course and uh, the one uh, promotional announcement is that you will get 50% off for KBA for C, KBS CBA or certified blockchain associate self paced program if uh, after completing this free course and uh, all the questions uh, will be uh, you can ask all your questions all your queries in the discussion board we and uh, we will be discussing it uh, in the next week and in the coming week sessions so that's all from my side uh, i hope you understood uh, an introduction to this blockchain uh, in the next week, we, we will be discussing week two content and week two discussion board queries. So I hope you will post some questions so that I can answer all your queries. And thank you for now and have a nice day.